In my last video on Zwift team time trialing, I concentrated on the techniques and tools I use as a DS to try and help a team get their best result. And you can find that video on my new website, zwift-ds.com. Having made that video, I was curious to understand exactly what the top teams are actually doing every week. Questions I had that didn't seem to be answered before. What difference does the team size make? Eight versus four. How are the riders matched and is everyone doing the same during a race? Just how much effort, how often and for how long are the top teams putting in during an event? So I decided to try and answer them for myself with some number crunching. What follows hopefully gives you some insight into the team makeup and the effort levels required based on the best. This applies regardless of your coffee class and is especially useful if you're a team that perhaps changes members every week who may not always have the chance to practice together and work out your own best plan involving more specialised skills like picking riders for certain sections or even deliberately burning a rider. At the end I'll also show you how you can potentially train the efforts required either solo or as a team. Before I start though, I want to revisit watts versus watts per kilogram. I regularly see conversations based on this topic and wanted to share my view. Now I'm sure there are dozens of teams who agree with a watts per kilo figure and stick to it. However, I maintain this is not always the most effective way to plan a fast race. So let me explain. Consider these two riders that could easily be in the same frappe team. Rider A has an FTP of 320 watts and 80 kilos, so 4 watts per kilo, whilst rider B, 240 watts at 65 kilos, or 3.7. If as a team, 4.5 is agreed on the front, when A is on the front, they're pulling 360 watts, which is crucially only 113% of FTP, which is not really hard enough, as we'll see. Meanwhile, rider B is at 105% even in third wheel and 113 in second, which is too much to maintain for the duration of the event, making their ability to contribute minimal and split slightly. So let's switch this around. Now rider B is on the front, doing their four and a half, which is 293 or 122% of FTP. And this is about hard enough for them, but not good for a good time, given the other power available. Meanwhile, rider A is only at 69% of FTP in third wheel, which is all day pace. Whilst this is a very simplified example, you can see how a watts per kilo figure really doesn't make the best of the team. In this scenario, you're better off having rider A sit at 320 watts, 10% more than rider B could hold for any length of time on the front, leave B in third wheel or beyond, saving 30% and to sit at 225 or 94% of FTP. And by the way, the difference in weight of 15 kilos on the flat would not make any discernible difference versus the loss in weight, uh, wattage from rider B being on the front. That said, once the road rises uh, above about 3%, then a watts per kilo figure to keep the team together could be the right one. For all the figures that follow, I'm using freely available data taken from a recent flat WTRL time trial. This negates the complications of teams splitting on the climbs and demonstrates how raw power as a squad is utilised in a purist's team time trial. Now it's well known that a group moves faster than a solo rider. Anyone who's had the horrible feeling of being just two seconds off a group knows this fact. Recently, the excellent GP Lama did a test of group versus solo, showing some startling differences in terms of time for a given power. But what about in a team time trial situation? Now, there are not too many teams of four to choose from in WTRL that stay together to the end, demonstrating evidence of taking turns on the front. There are also small teams who do very well, but I wanted to find teams of eight in the same coffee class who produce similar race average watts to see if there was any pattern in the results. And here's a few examples I found. Whilst this data may not take into account rider weight, this was a flat course and the coffee class used was the same in each comparison. So there is evidence that an eight rider team doing the same or similar intervals and with similar ability beat the four rider team by around a minute on a flat course. If you wanna do well then in your class, eight equally matched riders really helps so you can share the work evenly. 
Typically in the Doppio, this might be FTPs of 320 to 390 with an average around 360. And in Vienna Espresso, the figure was generally 210 to 280 with an average of 245. And the top teams, the spread of ability in terms of FTP was around 10% either side of that team average with very few riders falling outside of this. When there was a potentially weaker rider with an FTP of 15% below the team average, you should consider these riders doing very limited turns. Beyond 20% lower, and they really just need to stay in the draft, help the group speed effect, as they're just not sufficiently powerful enough to lead. This is where a plug for my DSing spreadsheet helps to lay out the capabilities available. It will also highlight who is well above average and can do longer pulls. I've used this before, asking one of a team to ride threshold in the draft throughout, keeping the team as large as possible. The top teams and way beyond use a pace line with remarkably similar 30 second power surges above FTP and overall average race power compared to the stated FTP when expressed as a percentage. Nothing new perhaps, but consistency is key. The more and regular the turns, typically 20 or 30 seconds, the faster the team. After a race, the team's amalgamated companion app looks, tends to look like this. See how the peaks of effort follow each other smoothly, certainly early on, even if they get a little more ragged later. So how much power are we talking about in these intervals in reality? This video is about the very best teams, so the numbers generated are going to be out of the reach of many, but in case you're interested, 30 second pulls well over 300 watts are typical in the Vienna Espresso top 5, and 500 watts for the best of the Doppio class. However, I was more interested in how these numbers compare to the stated ability of the riders. I've mentioned previously Zwift Insider research of four riders showed intervals of 120% were needed on the front for a group to beat their own FTP blob, whilst having a lower than FTP average for the race as a whole. However, all the teams easily surpassed this figure. In the Vienna, 130% above FTP, and in the Doppio, the figure was as high as 143. Turns were usually around 30 seconds, with three and a half minutes of comparative rest. This makes sense, because if you've ever used Trainer Road or Sufferfest, generally the VO2 max workouts you're doing 120% of FTP for two or three minutes, which is hard. So repeated efforts of only 30 seconds should be doable at higher than this. Also similar across teams was the average race power. Typically this was around 95% of riders FTPs. So what are my top tips for making sure you're really getting the best as you can as a team? Rather than 45 minutes at 100%, the teams are doing a set of overlapping over and under intervals of anything from 85 up to 130%. Make sure you have eight riders and try and ensure those riders are evenly matched. Use the spreadsheet and work out who can do what. Pick a target power that is at least 120% of the team average, ideally 130. Check your course notes. I have some of these on my website to check whether watts per kilo and blobbing would make better sense in certain situations or certain parts of the course. Really use the draft and get that rest at no less than about 85% in position three, 95 to 100 in position two, and that 130% plus in position one. Practice and be consistent and metronomic in those 30 second turns. Now this kind of session is pretty unique, indoors or out, and there aren't many workouts out there so I've made some. You can find a link to a full workout including warm-up that simulates what a Zwift team time trial should feel like on my website along with a link to instructions on the use from Zwift and Zwift Insider. If you really want to take your team results to the next level you could download the six rider set of files, create a stay together meetup and choose a file each for a rough simulation of how a team time trial should look. It will allow the team to do a guided effort to see how hard they can go and practice the communication required before doing it for real. With that, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. As I said, you can find all my content at zwift-ds.com. Bye for now.